citizen science broadens the range of people who are able to be included in the creation of new and useful knowledge. Today, the term is used to refer to a wide variety of knowledge and activities, knowledge gained through experience, insights that can be gained by citizens' particular access to phenomena, for example the ecology or pollution of a local area, the submission of data by large numbers of online volunteers. Although citizen science is only two decades old as a term, it has a history that dates back to the beginning of human civilization. The domestication of crops and animals by farmers and the study of birds and butterflies by amateur naturalists are examples. It is difficult to place citizen science projects in two categories, owing to the wide variety of subject areas, aims and approaches involved. The potential for carefully designed path battery processes to produce a revolution in the production and analysis of useful knowledge is enormous. However, there are big questions around issues, such as who sets the questions posed to citizen scientists, how appropriate quality assurance methods are developed, and what happens to the results. So how is citizen science shaping up? We spoke to Tom Wakeford, who is a reader in public science and citizen engagement at Coventry University in the UK, to get his views on the importance of citizen science, especially in the context of new technologies. How could citizen science help to drive environmental policy? Science, just to me, means reasoned knowledge. But uh, about 100 or 130 years ago, it became more and more a word owned by professions, professional science. Uh, you've got professional scientists and academies all over Europe. And uh, it meant that actually the rest of the people who weren't professional scientists uh, were seen as less knowledgeable and less able to contribute to progress. So um, I think the, the, the danger of the, the use I see at the moment for policymakers is that citizen science tends to be used as if scientists should always be in charge of the process. But I think we have lots of evidence from across Europe that lots of citizens um, should uh, have a, a, a big say in these research processes uh, people like farmers and shepherds uh, in, in agriculture, um, people who uh, know how to keep their seeds for the following year. We've heard about a pollution example and, of course, a very famous example made famous by the actress Julia Roberts in uh, Erin Brockovich was a, uh, a woman who was just a legal clerk who trained herself to become uh, a kind of environmental scientist leading to a, a great change in policy in, in the US. So, so for me, good citizen science for policymakers is about dialogue and about using the principles of participatory democracy. What can technologies do for citizen science? I think now there are lots of projects identifying wildlife with smartphones and taking photos and submitting them. Um, I just hope that they are as linked to uh, policy processes and people advocating for, uh, uh, for example, reduced use of uh, harmful pesticides um, as uh, it has been previously. So I think that's an issue. On, on the issue of quality, uh, there's a distinction made and some discussion about the different quality of verified citizen science, which is seen as uh, uh, where observations made by non-professionals are verified uh, by experts. And then there is direct citizen science, which is uh, where there's no verification process. What is the added value of citizen science for society and policymaking? Citizen science can be of great educational value, particularly where uh, the process of education between professional scientists and others is seen as two-way, because we are all very used to scientists uh, having the answers uh, to problems, because that's what we see mostly them portrayed in the TV and uh, uh, in the media. But what lots of experience uh, uh, throughout Europe in the last 50, 100 years uh, has shown is that often the citizens can find blind spots, places that the scientists hadn't been looking or hadn't been told to look by those who are funding them. So I think the, the societal value of citizen science is, uh, for me, based on uh, there being a shared ownership of, of science, 
And uh, this doesn't mean that the policymakers tell the scientists what their results are, um, but it is that the sorts of questions science uh, is asking is reached, uh, those decisions about the questions are reached through dialogue. So uh, I think uh, citizen science can bridge the gap between policymakers and citizens, but uh, it, it does that best when there's an uh, openness and an open-minded dialogue. Is it worth it? I think it is worth it when uh, citizens can as much as possible be part of deciding what questions citizen science processes are meant to be asking. And that needs a long process of uh, mutual dialogue and sometimes training on both sides between uh, the professional scientists and other citizens.